Hello and welcome to Edusathi. I hope uh, you've covered the topic of function in part one of this lecture. Now we'll be moving to part two with, in which we'll be solving some of the questions related on the concepts that we have learned in the lecture on functions. So let's look at the first question that we have. The first question is consider the two functions fx and gx fx is equal to x and gx is equal to 2x plus 4 then find f of f of x f of gx g of fx now when I have to start with this question I'll look at an I a composite function as f of f of x that means for the first f my input will be x for the second f the input is the output of the first so if I start with the in, with the inner one fx is actually equal to x so I'll be left with f of x which will actually which will also be equal to x look at the second question f of gx now gx for g my input is x so output will be as per this formula so the output of this of gx which is 2x plus 4 will be the input for the first thing so f of x is equal to x so f of 2x plus 4 will be equal to 2x plus 4 let's look at the third which is g of fx that will be equal to g now for fx the output is x for gx if the input is x the output is 2x plus 4 so my answer will be 2x plus 4 2x plus 4 and x for the three questions based upon composite functions let's look at the second question in the second question we have to find out the value of f32 it's a iterative function that means the same function has to be performed thrice and that function is given as 2x minus 1 it's a question on iterative function so let's let's look at it and the initial input which is there is 2 so if I compute the function once it will be equal to 2 of 2 minus 1 which will be 3 now the output of this will become the input of the second iteration that means f2 2, 2 will actually be equal to the output of the first becomes the input of the second which will be 6 minus 1 which will be 5 now the third time when I am doing which is what f3x or f3 2 will be equal to f of 5 which will be equal to 10 minus 1 and the answer that you get for this question comes out to be equal to 9 I hope the question is clear let's move to the third question now the third question is saying is the given function x square minus 1 an even function now I hope you remember the definition of an even function for an even function the value of fx and the value of f minus x comes out to be same that was what an even function was so either you can go with the definition or you can take any value of x so if I calculate f of 2 this will be 2 square minus 1 4 minus 1 which will be 3 and if I calculate f of minus 2 it will be again 4 minus 1 which will be 3 since f of 2 is equal to f of minus 2 that means f of x is equal to f of minus x that means it is an even function that we have so it is an even function my answer would be yes it is an even function that we have let's move ahead and look at the fourth question the fourth question is is the given function an odd function so again if I go by the definition if fx is equal to minus of f of minus x it is an odd function so you can assume any value of x let me take it as 2 so this will be 2 cube which will be 8 minus 2 which will give me an answer of 6 f of minus 2 minus 2 cube which will be minus 8 minus minus 2 which comes out to be the value which is minus 8 plus 2 which is minus 6 so what we get is f of 2 and f of minus 2 are same in magnitude but opposite in sign. So if I put a minus sign, I'll get this thing. So that means f of x is equal to 
minus of f of minus x that means they have to be equal in magnitude but opposite in direction that means it is an odd function that we have so is the function odd my answer again would be yes the function the given function is an odd function an important thing to notice it is not necessary that a function has to be either even or odd 90 percent of the functions that you have are neither even nor odd. now let us look at the question the question is based upon modulus function and the question is find the solution to the equation x square plus 5x 5 of mod x plus 6 equals to 0 so whenever you have a case of mod x what you need to look at is your input and output values now in case of mod x your input can be either negative or positive but your output will always be positive so what you have to do is you'll have to make two separate cases for input values so i am making case one now in case one what i'm taking is i suppose x is positive now when i take x positive my equation becomes x square plus 5x plus 6 equals to 0 now i can break this equation by splitting the middle term or you can uh, follow the other methods of discriminant or uh, sum and the product of roots to find out the roots so it is x square plus 2x plus 3x plus 6 equals to 0 now what you have is you can take x common and it will be x minus 2 sorry x plus 2 plus 3 common and it will again be x plus 2 equals to 0 now when you take x plus 2 common it will be x plus 2 into x plus 3 is equal to 0 so the value of x that you get is minus 2 and minus 3 now look at the value that you have assumed for x you have assumed that x is positive that is the thing that you have started up with you have assumed that x is positive but the value of x is coming out to be negative minus 2 and minus 3 so this case this case will be rejected because what you have supposed to be the value is not coming out to be the actual value you have supposed x to be positive and in fact x is coming out to be negative now let's look at at the second case that we'll have so i'll i'll make a case two now in that case i'll suppose that x is negative now if i start with this the equation will become x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals to 0 now when you have an equation of this type you again need to solve it by break, splitting up the middle term or uh, by you know uh, any other method now if you start with this you will get and if you proceed ahead and try to solve this equation what you will get is roots as or the values of x that satisfy the equation as x comes out to be equal to 3 and 2 so the value of x comes out to be 2 and 3 what have you supposed you have supposed x to be negative what is it coming out to be positive again your answer contradicts the initial assumption that you have started up so again this case would be rejected so the number of solutions that you will have will be zero there will be no solution to this equation that we'll have because there is no way that the value of x satisfies this other way if you want to look at it you look at an equation this is square square of a number would always be positive mod of x and into 5 obviously mod of x that means the output will always be positive and what is 6 6 is positive can three positive numbers add up to give you zero that can never happen so that means there is no solution to this equation or there's zero solution or there's no solution that we have to this Let's look at another question. The question is solve for x if mod of x minus 3 plus mod of x minus plus 2 is equal to 6. Again, I will make cases. This would be positive. This could be positive. This could be positive. This could be negative. This could be negative. This could be positive. And both of them could be negative. So I'll have to make four cases. Now in case 1, I'll look at both of them to be positive. So it will be x minus 3 plus x plus 2 is equal to 6 so if you just solve the equation you will get 2x is equal to 7 or x is equal to 7 by 2 so this is the first 
case that we have. Now, if I look at the second case, I'm assuming the first one to be positive and the second one to be negative. So if it is negative, this will be the equation that you will get. X and X gets cancelled out. So again, case 2 leads to us in no solution. Let's look at a case which is case 3. Now case 3 is, I'm assuming this to be negative and this to be positive. Again, if you look at it, it cancels out and leading you with no solution. If I look at the last case, which is case number 4, and try solving this case, this is negative, so this will be 3 minus x. This is also negative, so it will be minus x minus 2 is equal to 6. So this minus 2x equals to, uh, this will be coming out to be 5. So x is equal to minus 5 by 2 is what you get. Now, the two solutions that you have got, 7 by 2 and 5 by 2, these are the two solutions that you have. Now, what you need to do is, you need to put back these solutions and check for your assumptions. What is 7 by 2? 3.5. Now, if you put 3.5 in here, it should come out to be positive. It is. And if you put 3.5 here, it should come out to be positive. It is. So, that means this is a correct solution that you have under the assumption that you have taken. Now, look at the last one. This is minus 2.5 that I have. Now, if I put it here, minus 2.5 minus 3, it is coming out to be negative. Perfectly all right. Minus 2.5 plus 2, it is also coming out to be perfectly all right. So, that means there are two solutions. One is x is equal to 3.5. Another one is x is equal to minus 2.5, which satisfies the given equation. So, solve for x, the value of x is minus 2.5 and plus 3.5, which satisfies the given equation. So it is minus 2.5 and 3.5 which satisfy. Let's move ahead and look at another question based upon a modulus function. The question is mod of 2x plus 3 plus x is equal to 10 and you have to solve for x. Again, I'll make two separate cases. This could be positive. This could be negative. So if I look at the case one that I have, what I have is and I'm assuming it to be positive. So I'll take 2x plus 3 plus x is equal to 10. So I'll take 3x is equal to 7 or x is equal to 7 by 3. Now if I put back x is equal to 7 by 3, the assumption that we have taken, that means it is positive, it is holding true. So that means this is the correct answer that we have. Now if I look at case 2, it will be minus 2x minus 3 plus x is equal to 10. So this will be uh, it will be 13 on this side and it will be minus x. So the value of x that you get is minus 13. Again, you need to put back this value in the equation and check that the assumption that you have taken, is it holding true? So if I put minus 3 back, so it will be minus 26 plus 3, which will be, the answer will be in minus. So that means there are two solutions that you have for this equation. And the answer is minus 13 and plus 7 by these are the two solutions that you have for the given modulus function equation. The next question that we have is on greatest integer function. Greatest integer function, I hope you remember, is a function that gives the value which is greater than, sorry, which gives the value which is less than or equal to the number given in the input. So it's the greatest integer less than or equal to the number which is given in the input. So the question that we have is, if fx is equal to 3 times greatest integer function x and gx is equal to x square minus 3, then find the value of f of gx if x is equal to 2.5. This is such as a composite function that you have. So this is what you just given to you. f of gx and what is the input? g is equal to this. So f of what is it? 2.5 square minus 3. That will be the input for 2.5 square is 6.25 minus 3. So this will be 3.25 which is an input of f. So f is 3 times my input is 3.25. What will be the greatest integer function of 3.25? It will be 3 multiplied by 3 giving me an answer which is equal to 9. I hope the question is clear to you. Let's look at the question based upon the concept of periodicity. If there is a function x such that f of x plus 1 plus f of x minus 1 is equal to fx, then for what value of p the relationship fx plus p is equal to minus fx holds true. 
Now, uh, whenever you have a question based upon periodicity, you will have to start with the assumption of values. So if I take x is equal to 1, I'll have f1 plus f0, sorry, f2 plus f0 is equal to f1. Now you can put x is equal to 2. You'll have f3 plus f2. 1 is equal to f of 2. Now this is first equation that you have and this is the second equation. If you add up the equations, you will see f2 will get cancelled out, f1 will get cancelled out and you will be left with f3 plus f0 equals to 0. So you will have f of 3 is equal to minus f of 0. So from this equation, you can find out the value of P. So the value of P comes out to be equal to 3. So that is the answer that we have to this question. I hope the question is clear. Thank you for watching the video. Please move on to uh, lecture number 3 of functions which will help you in uh, finding out the graphs of the function based upon the based upon the basic graphs which is the transformation of graph. Thank you so much for watching the video.